so um i approached one of the publishers i won't say who for a book that was coming out because i'm like hmm, this looks interesting i actually think it's a bit of me so um i inboxed them on instagram and i was like hey um I'm a booktuber and bookstagrammer and book talker re since recently or tiktoker but that's a whole other thing so uh let me know if i can get on the mailing list or if i can get a pr copy for this book because it seems like something that is super interesting and i'd love to review it for my channel for my audience and then the um publisher got back to me and they were like oh yeah um I guess we could just email this person but just like heads up you're probably not gonna get a copy because you need to be a little bit more consistent so I was like Ugh. um that was definitely a drag <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time joining me, my name is Ofente and I am your book bay. Your book bay is in the building. Your book bay is here to stay with another video. Bo, 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 bo. If you guys have are OGs and you've been around with me, like my content creation journey on this channel, Instagram, drips and drabs of like bookstagram content, you know the vibes, you know that consistency is just not my thing. But um, like, and then a while back, I kind of felt like, okay, I need to stop making excuses for it and just do it. Like, even if I haven't been here for a minute, I just need to just get into it and stop telling people long stories about, oh, this happened, this happened. But like, yeah. And I've also started an, a TikTok. So um, follow me on TikTok at OffentaMDK, um, same as my Instagram handle, OffentaMDK, at the beginning of my journey on YouTube. And this girl was like, what if I told you that if you just keep posting videos and you just get to 70 videos on your channel that your channel is going to grow blow up and all this stuff because at the end of the day yeah this is fun and i love doing this but how amazing would it be if we got to you know a significant amount of subscribers so we could actually share in the bookish content and build a community like that that's the actual goal that's incredible you know because they're not only are we sharing am i sharing in what i love but you guys are growing and coming on the journey with me and i'm engaging with you and hearing from you and learning from my subscribers as well if you haven't already please just subscribe right now like this video right now comment all those good things and yeah if you're an og tell me like what is your favorite thing about this channel but Apart from that, so that kind of made me introspect. I was like, wow, like, girl, the only stop thing stopping you is yourself. So back to that thing, I think I did mention that this girl's like, just get to 70 videos. And then what if I told you, if you just got to 70 videos, your channel would blow up, right? And then I checked, and I've never forgotten that, like, throughout my journey. So then I checked my um, numbers the other day, like, how many videos I actually have on the channel. And I think I'm at 61 videos so i'm like okay like nine more let me just see and then it's going to be like 10 more and then it's going to be like you know because yeah there's quite a few videos on this channel there's a few things that i actually haven't posted but long intro aside that's just something that i've been thinking about so hey guys i'm back and i know yeah <sighs> i know i can do better and i'm trying i'm a trying i'm trying yeah i'm not even gonna give you a half like baked excuse because you know what like Everybody has excuse. Everybody has life. Every content creator has stuff that they have going on outside content creation. It's just a matter of how serious you are about it. And yeah, I am here to stay. I am your book bay and I really am here to stay. So all of that stuff aside, I hope you guys are good. I hope you guys have been doing well. Um, this is a book review video and we're reviewing Mame by Jessica George just for the thumbnail period. So um, I read this book and I completed it a few months ago actually and I loved it so in case you're wondering what kind of review i'm gonna give at the end of this video spoiler alert but um we'll go straight into it so i actually read, um, wrote down a few notes because it's actually been a minute since i read the book so i just wanted to refresh my mind and give myself like some things some, some things to think about but i find also that it's actually best when i don't read and review immediately um i guess it's pros and cons but the pros of not reviewing immediately is that I actually remember, like, I, it's less likely to be a spoiler video because some of the information is just kind of, you know, to make space for new info. But the cons is that maybe there's some pertinent discussions or some points that I would have liked to make or made with, and I wouldn't remember them because it's been like such a long time. So that's where the notes come in, right? 
So without further ado, -do, let's get into the video. First thing that I'd like to talk about is the synopsis. So um, in short, the book is about a young girl. Her name is Maddie. She is the protagonist. And um, the book is called Mame. It's basically about her. And Mame means um young woman or rather the one who takes care of the family it's kind of like a ghanaian term term of endearment so her family is from ghana they are ghanaian and she is a first generation person i will say um who grew up in england and her family is originally so her parents grew up in ghana and then they moved here after getting married after her mom got married to her dad oh well, her dad has parkinson's disease so her journey and her life mostly like as a young 20 year old or 25 year old she's in her early 20s largely revolves revolves around her taking care of her dad and being like the responsible person because she got a deadbeat mom who spends one year in ghana one year in england one year in ghana one year in england so um that for me was kind of crazy because i'm like wow the mom is so selfish because how can you just leave your daughter to take care of your husband but then the thing is that she goes back to kind of take care of the they have like a large or some kind of resort back home where they run as like a family business and that's her responsibility to help her brother slash mummy's or maddie's uncle with running the place and then she has an older brother and his name is james and he's kind of just like a rock star he just checked out you know it's so funny because sometimes i think about it like i don't know about other cultures or racial groups but i know specifically like in the african culture like girls and boys are brought up very differently so girls are often brought up to think about others like no like i know i can think about it for myself like i was um there's i guess like in our family there's like a first batch of kids and then there's like the second batch so um the first batch i was always the youngest but i was always the girl so there were certain responsibilities that i had by virtue of me just being a girl right amongst all these guys growing up just being i guess the rose amongst the thorns if you want to put it that way and then there was the second batch of kids and that was like you know all my younger brothers and sisters and cousins and like then my role became kind of like making sure they're good um a lot of the things that were not necessarily um the type of responsibility given to like my cousins or my brothers or whatever were kind of were like thrust on me and i'm not saying that from a resentful space but i'm just using it as a contrast where girls are brought up to think about others and little things like we are the ones who are tasked with a, ta a, a chore like cooking cooking is for everybody you know um i cook a meal not just for myself but for my whole family right and then your brothers and your uh, male cousins or whatever that's not necessarily always their job okay fine like in all the years they're brying but i don't know like for those of you who did grow up in that context you understand what i'm saying and um please don't get me wrong i'm not like complaining or anything like that i'm just drawing a contrast between girls are brought up to think about external including themselves and then boys are more so brought up like to view like themselves as individuals obviously that's situational and i will speak from my lived experience okay so um when it comes to james i've seen and experienced relatives like james who are kind of like i'm gonna do my own thing and like what other people do they do but that has nothing to do with me because i'm living my life so he's that quintessential older selfish brother and mommy is just left at home and she has to take care of her dad and she has to go to school and she has to uh, make sure that she's employed so she can eat and contribute to the household and always have money for her mom and her mom is asking for her money all the way in ghana whatever the case may be you know she's carrying this heavy burden and she doesn't often have that assistance because give me, like bogota vibes like ah uh, it's a lot i don't know i could really relate to her in some ways and also not in other ways but could identify with her so yeah that's just like a brief synopsis of the book it's like her coming of age story as a person young girl young african girl in her early 20s living in the uk born to ghanaian parents with a sick dad he can barely speak um the, he has a nurse though who comes and helps her to take care of him like now and then like i think they alternate like she, he might come on like monday wednesday friday but then the rest of the week it's kind of like she's on her own and her brother's off traveling the world being a dj and then her mom is in ghana half the time and when she's around she's kind of like a source of criticism and endless reminder of why mommy is not good enough da -da 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 -da. so yeah deep 
chats okay so um yeah definitely african lit or i don't remember where i read this i think i read like an interview or somewhere in the book actually the author actually speaks about how this was loosely based on her lived experience so i was like wow wow you know that was quite like jarring and um i think you can feel it in her writing that it's, it's personal to her this subject matter is not something that she kind of just thought up and she, or she saw somewhere per se it's largely personal it's largely lived experiences it's largely based on what she's experienced and what she's seen and what she feels about certain things or um and tracks kind of like her healing process throughout and mama at some stage is severely depressed she does have a support system but i don't know because she's been brought up in the way where you don't like share certain things i know in certain um families or just culturally you're not necessarily you're told to keep things to yourself like you don't want to make yourself vulnerable so you kind of just taught like keep this to yourself we don't tell people this like for example when she was at school um primary school her, her kid her peers would ask her where's your mom how's your mom whatever and that would maybe be the time when her mom is away in ghana for the year you know the year when she's away and she'd just be like no my mom's good you know so no one knew that she was living without a mom like parenting herself and like being playing the role of the woman of the household because there was no one else there to kind of fill in that role and um, so moving on to the next section of our video which is the themes look so um first things first definitely parentification i think i just covered that um you know the fact that a lot of the responsibility was thrust on her at a very young age when she's supposed to be you know young cute hot girl energy she's now tasked with taking care of her sick dad and like who's gonna take care of her dad if not her who if not her when her brother's off doing whatever he's doing um traveling the world it's not to say that he was just kind of chilling doing nothing he was living large you know um building himself in that scene like music scene and then her mom is then in ghana with doing her own thing child which i won't get into because that's a bit of a spoiler i want you guys to read the book and let me know if you have read the book and you know what i'm talking about comment a yellow heart down below in the comment section okay um parkinson's also a theme in the book love the individual versus the group we've spoken a little bit about that as well in the context of culturally um being a first generation person of color in a new country being in that um section or like of the diaspora just africanness and what it means to be african in the context of a very western way of living the disconnect between you as an african person who happens to be living in the uk um connecting with language uh the understanding like of culturally like how certain things are meant to be around your elders etc etc and just knowing how to act in certain situations based on your culture but then being brought up in a completely different culture but being expected to know what the right thing is to do in certain circumstances based on the fact that you know ultimately you are an african um yeah friendship big theme in the book dating uh yeah just this i guess process of elimination and finding commonality like finding the right person that is um speaks your language in more ways than one right so that's another thing that um i always kind of think about when it comes to interracial dating and interracial um, understanding so it's different when culturally you are brought up in the same bubble so let's say we have two different racial group racial groups and they happen to date each other or marry each other but then the one was brought up in the other one's world but what happens when you've been brought up in two separate worlds um based on your culture or your ethnicity or just your race and then you come together because i don't know if there's somebody that is from the same background as you there's certain things that you don't have to communicate or explain that you take for granted that people who um understand like the how of how you grew up just get but then that's another um layer of getting to know your partner um just the cultural like nuances that come with being who they are so yeah something i always think about as a side and yeah those are some of the themes so after that we'll go straight into what i liked about the book um first things first i love the writing uh, i love the story i loved the authenticity i you can tell that she's writing from a place of her lived experience i love the different elements in terms of like at some stage she'll have like little text messages or she'll have google searches in the actual copy of the book that kind of just makes it more 
um, interactive in that way uh, that was quite creative and um, in a lot of ways just as a side for those of you who, who grew up reading the princess diaries i don't know it was giving a princess diaries but for black girls and also another side for those of you who have read queenie i do have a review of queenie on my channel um i feel like this is what queenie was trying to be and i yeah like this coming of age story for a young black girl in her early 20s like this is that but then i don't want to delegitimize the story that queenie told because every story is different but for me like this is what i okay expected queenie to be let me put it that way when i was reading queenie and i was hearing oh book talk instagram queenie this is what my expectation was what i read in this book so yeah um yeah so in terms of what i didn't dislike what i didn't like or disliked about the book um the fact that there's no sequel okay just saying um yeah, sometimes the pace was a little bit slow for me and I felt like it could be sped up. But perhaps that's just like the whole point that like in some of the, the spaces in the book, you need to kind of feel like that, like change in emotion. Like you can um, identify then with the diction of the author, which was also um, coincidentally quite, yeah, it was conversational, it was understandable. There wasn't, I mean, she's a smart girl, the narrator, you can tell. So she speaks to you as an equal, but there's certain things, like a certain naivety that she has, just that comes from being a little bit sheltered, which I could definitely identify with at some stages, although not as much as many, but like definitely also could identify at with. And then just her tone is like, it's just so honest shame man like sometimes it's like wow like she's so real but she's so complicated it, she's just like oh probably one of my favorite narratives that i've read this entire year if not my favorite i just need to track back and think about the books that i have read this year but um yeah for now i definitely feel like maddie mommy she is my fave a fave okay because in a lot of ways i'm like did i write this okay but you know what i mean and yeah i could really identify which probably is why i love the book so much so thank you jessica george love you for reading this for writing this book i love you love you love you loads um, i'm trying to do those hearts but my fingers don't go that way Ugh. let me try and um yeah okay so now i'm going into everybody's favorite part of the video period if you don't like this part you can just in the video right now if you don't care about my rating by now you should know that you should know you should have a, a guesstimation of what you think i'm gonna read this book and i think i will give it a solid a solid nine and a half out of ten why because i know that this is just if i'm not mistaken but i'm gonna say i know because i know everything I know that this is Jessica George's debut novel and I feel like I never want to give a 10 out of 10 for a debut novel because then when are you going to feel the pressure to write us another one? When are you going to feel the pressure to defend your honor and show us that you can give us that 10 out of 10? So definitely um, 9.5 out of 10. Um, oh, I just love this book. Like if I could dive into the pages and give mommy a hug, I would. And I just want to say thank you to Jessica George for writing this book because you are important authors who just speak to um sometimes the experience that is not necessarily communicated i wrote i spoke earlier about how i was an avid reader of the princess diaries growing up and maybe i should do like a reread of the series and like compared to what i think and understand about life now but as an aside um yeah i just want to say this book is important books like this books like queenie as much as i didn't necessarily um it didn't meet my expectations but it's still important literature like just um communicating this experience of young black girls who are growing up and who are just doing life and um yeah i don't know special place in my heart for this type of literature okay so if you haven't already please remember to like comment and subscribe to my channel and i'll be back with another review when i'm back with another review period bye for now